Hi friends, I'm Anna Hellman and I'm so glad you're here today. Today we are talking about mass producing cards. Do you ever get overwhelmed when you have a lot of cards to send out soon and you really don't have much time to prepare them? Maybe it's Christmas cards. That's what we'll actually be working on today. Uh, but the tricks and ideas I'll be sharing, you'll be able to apply to any cards. Maybe it's shower invitations or wedding invites or sympathy cards or birthday cards. You're trying to rebuild your collection of cards and you just like, you need to make a lot of cards in a short amount of time. We will be talking about mass producing ideas for saving time minimizing waste with your paper, uh, using your six by six papers. I get a questions about a lot of these things and we'll be covering a lot of them in this video. I hope you'll stick around and watch. I think you'll really learn some things to help you save time on some of your projects. Make sure you stick around till the end. I will be sharing at the end a few ways to step up your simple yet beautiful cards easily. And I'll also be sharing another way for making even quicker and easier cards using some of the ideas I'll be sharing or th throughout the video. So let's get started. We are going to start with what I typically start with when I am mass producing cards, which is preparing my card bases. I have three colors here, soft succulent, cherry cobbler, and basic black. And I am going to show you a couple of ways you can save a little bit of time when you are preparing your card bases. Here is the first one. Uh, I love my Stampin' Up! Tremor. And I, one of the reasons is because it cuts and scores at the same time. Now I have two pieces of cardstock here layered and I am gonna score this with a scoring blade and I'm gonna press nice and hard so that it actually does a little bit of score line on my second piece of cardstock, okay? So I did my scoring. Now I am going to turn this sideways and cut at the five and a half inch mark. And now I have four card bases prepared very quickly. Now I get a lot of questions about my tremor and the lines on my tremor. And I have created these to help to prepare my card bases and my card mats. Now, if you're interested in this, I will have a link in the video description below where you can find out more information about that. I have lots of tips and tricks I like to share. So if you haven't taken a look at them before, you can do that at the end or anytime. Uh, if you click on my channel name below, Scrapping Stamping and Stuff with Anna Hellman, go to my channel there at the top, you'll see my playlist called Card Making Tips and Tricks. And there are lots of them. Okay, so in just a few seconds, I have my card bases already cut. And I like to flip them over. I like to fold so that the, the bump, the part that sticks up, uh, it is up instead of having like a valley where your score line is to have a little mountain. I find that I get a better crease and it lays flat better this way. Now for your piece of cardstock that was on the bottom, the one that may not have gotten scored quite as well, uh, it may not show up as well, but what I find is it still scores really well. And I get a nice crease right there where I want it. Now, when I am mass producing cards, sometimes I do have to prepare my card bases by, like this, but one of the, my favorite time-saving tips for my craft room is to keep card bases prepped and ready on hand. I have some in a little plastic basket that I got from the dollar store, and I keep them on hand. So I have all of my colors. I usually cut three or four pieces of cardstock at a time. So I'll have six or eight card bases in each color on hand at any time so that if I want to make a card in this color or that color, I just grab that basket, pull the color out that I want, and I'm ready to go. Really saves a lot of time. Now, when I'm doing a lot of cards in the same color, then I will do what you're seeing right here, which is just prep them when I get started. Okay, so I have all 12 card bases prepared. We'll be doing four in each color. So I'll set those off to the side and let's next prepare our designer papers, which are going to set the background for our cards. First, I'll show you the paper pack I'm using because I think this is such a beautiful paper pack, especially for Christmas cards. 
It is called Lights Aglow, and it is specialty paper that has some gold foil accents in it. So I will spread these apart, show them to you quickly, and then I have chosen three of these designs that I will be cutting, and each piece of the six by six paper will make two of my cards. So just some really pretty prints there. You can see some of that gold. And then of course they are double-sided and that is going to be a huge advantage for what we're doing because when we cut these, we will be using some pieces showing one design and some pieces showing the design on the reverse side. I have chosen this red print this lovely soft succulent green print and then i really like this black one here as well let's start with the black and he again you can layer several on top of each other with cardstock i typically don't cut more than two thick with designer paper you can probably cut three thick or more but for the 12 cards we're preparing i'm cutting two of each designer paper and I am going to cut on specific dimensions that I've already prepared. And if you want to see these to make it easy to re replicate this yourself, what you want to do is use the link in the video description below, go to my website. I'll have a picture there of how to cut your pieces of paper. So for this first one, we are going to cut at four inches. Now, when you're cutting through multiple pieces of paper, I really encourage you to pull and remove your excess before you move this. That way, if you didn't get cut all the way through, you can just move the blade again and not have to worry about lining it back up properly. Okay, so I cut at the four inch mark. I am going to turn these pieces sideways and cut at three quarters over here. I have it lined up over on this edge at five and one quarter. And then this narrower per piece right here. I am going to line up at three inches and we are going to cut this in half. Now, these pieces are going to be for a card. These pieces are going to be for a card. For right, actually two cards and two cards. So I'm going to set these in piles over off to the side. We will get back to these in a little bit. Now let's cut the red design. We're going to start the same way with this one, line it up at four inches. The four inch piece, I am turning sideways. I'm cutting at, we'll line up at five and a half down here. So I'm going to cut off half an inch down here at this end. Now I am turning this back vertically and we're going to cut at three quarters of an inch. Now, if you like to watch along and you wanna do these again, of course you can watch this back and do it exactly how I'm doing, or like I said, pull up those dimensions and you can print it out if you like. Now this one, it's two inches wide. We are going to line this up at the four inch mark. So we'll cut off two inches at the bottom. And my green prints, we are also going to line up at four inches. Now, one thing I like to do, and you're, you may be figuring this out as we are going four inches, I'm gonna turn this sideways, cut it three now, is even though I am bulk preparing a lot of cards at the same time, I don't want them all to look the same. This piece, I want to line up at five and cut off one inch at the bottom. I don't want them all to look the same. So for that reason, we are cutting several dimensions. Now you may find, well, I really like the dimensions that she used on the black cards. So you could do those dimensions for all of yours, or you really like the ones on the red cards. Uh, so you can do all the same if you want to, but I wanted to show you how we can bulk prepare these, but still end up with a lot of one of a kind cards. Okay, next, we are going to be using some punches on these projects. Now I love to do die cutting. Die cutting is beautiful, creates some amazing cards, but when I really need to create a lot of cards, my go-to products are typically punch bundles. This is the one I'll be using here, the Peaceful Deer stamp set with the Deer Builder Punch. And we are going to start doing a little stamping and punching. And to get started, I'll bring in, here's a piece of crumb cake cardstock. I'm going to stamp some deer on here. 
and I have decided to stamp with basic gray. I thought it looked really nice with my colors of cardstock. And I'm going to stamp one to get an idea of my spacing first. Now, once it's stamped, I can punch it if I want to, or I may be able to do this without punching. What I wanna do is figure out how wide I need to cut my strips to be able to have several strips that I can stamp my deer on and then go through and just punch them out quickly. So for this deer, uh, it looks like two and a quarter inches should be enough. So bring my trimmer back in. We are going to cut several strips that measure two and a quarter inches. And if I cut three of those, that should be enough to be able to cut 12 of these. Sometimes when I'm punching, I like to do some extras. Do you ever get to the end and you dropped one on the floor and can't find it or it got lost somewhere? Uh, sometimes I like to do extras. We'll see how many fit on my papers here. You do have to keep in mind that sometimes punches, especially these builder punches that have multiple pieces, sometimes they cut extra things off on the sides. If so, you may need to build in some extra space in between this one. That should not be a problem. So we will stamp, looks like I can stamp five on each of these. So I'll end up with a few extras. And actually one of the things I like about this particular stamp set is we can even change up which deer we are using. And here I am going to bring in the other one. So this is another stamp that coordinates with that same punch. And you may not be able to see it quite up close enough, but in the design of its body, it says, oh, what fun. So I'll raise this up and maybe you'll be able to see that a little bit better. Can you see that that says, oh, what fun. I think this is a neat set. So let's go ahead and we can punch these out now. And I do have another tip I want to share with you for another way to save your time on some punching. Now, this is a stamp set that takes me, you, some stamps and punches line up really quickly. This one takes me, I'm going to say like an extra one second to line it up because of the legs. It takes just a second longer than some of the real basic shapes. But I do want to show you one other way you can stamp and punch that may work better for some of you. And I'll show that as soon as I get all these punched out. But it uses the Stamparatus, which is my stamping platform. Uh, there are others out there. I am a huge fan of my Stamparatus. I know many of you are as well. I hear all the time how much you love that amazing tool. But what we'll do is sh I'll show you a way how you can actually punch first and then do your stamping on the Stamparatus really quickly and easily. So here I am at the end of my second strip. I have one more. And I am curious, I, I'll be sharing, like I said, lots of tips in this video about saving time and mass preparing. I would love to hear some of yours. If you have tips that I am not sharing here, comment below and let us know. You, you all out there know so many things as well and I love to hear some of your tips and tricks. Okay, so I have all 15 of these punched out now. I have lots of deer and lots of stray antlers and things and little noses that are not red, but I could use them if I wanted to. So I'll sort out the deer. And then real quickly, I'm gonna show you that other trick for how to stamp and punch using the Stamparatus, like I said, as soon as I get these out of the way. So we are going to need one of these and I am going to trim, I have some extra here, but that's okay, I'll trim it down. And I want to use my Stamparatus. I am going to put a piece of paper in the base of it. And I need to stamp on this piece of paper one time. I'm 
This is a really cool trick. Once you see this, uh, people are usually amazed when they see this the first time. So we'll see if you are amazed. Maybe this is something you've done quite a bit. If so, you may not be amazed. That's totally okay. So it doesn't really matter where it's at. Put it on there. I hadn't cleaned it off as you can see, but let's do one good stamp. I wanna make sure that paper is up there in the corner. I will stamp and I am going to place my negative piece here around the edge. And I wanna tape it in place with, it doesn't really matter what kind of tape you use. I'll use a little bit of washi tape because that's what I usually have handy. You want to make sure you get this lined up really well because if you don't, all of your punches are going to be off a little bit. Now I'll pull in a couple of pieces, a couple of these punches. These are some I had done before, but you will get the idea. So these just happen to be white. So what you're gonna do is line, so you can punch all of them out. When you, know, when you can punch and not have to line it up with anything, you can punch really quickly. So got my punching done. I'm gonna put it right there in my little template. Ink my deer, stamp. And it is stamped very nicely. Now, you can't just pick these out. This one actually lifted itself out. Sometimes I find that they don't wanna come out. So I use my little take your pick tool. One of my favorite tools. It is useful for all kinds of things. And lay the next one in ink make sure that paper stays in place if you're doing a lot of this you may actually want to tape that paper in the corner and stamp so this can be a trick that really really saves time and headache and you just don't have to be as careful lining up all those stamped images when you are punching so i wanted to make sure i shared that with you now we are going to be using a, a, a few more punches on our card I love the detail that punches give and how quickly they are to do. So that's why we are using several. We're gonna create this for a little background for the deer. And I did already measure this. I know I need to cut at two and three quarters. So I'll cut several strips, two and three quarters wide so that I can do my punching of these. last one will be a little bit wider I'll just leave it but with something like vellum you can actually stack several layers on top and punch together so I'm not really sure let's experiment right now can we do three layers at one time let's try it out let's find out I would imagine yes is the answer yep so there's three six nine I already had one so that's 10 and here is 11 and 12. okay so those are the majority of the pieces for the cards now the pieces I have not prepared yet we need a greeting right and if you want to save time of course you can always stamp a greeting directly on your card but for a little bit more detail, I would like to stamp onto some white paper and punch it out. I have another punch that I love. I use a ton for greetings, this double oval punch. So for these pieces, I'm going to trim these down into one and one quarter inch pieces. And the stamp I'll be using for this, it's one of these photopolymer clear stamps. And the reason I mention that is because sometimes I like to stamp and punch my greeting out. Stamp it first, punch my greeting out second. Sometimes I actually like to punch first and then stamp on it second, especially when I have these photopolymer stamps. So this is a little bit unconventional because I do usually stamp first and punch second, but with these handy little photopolymer stamps that I can see through. 
I will be able to line up really well on these ovals for my greetings. And you will see in just a second. Uh, so when you don't have to line up your greeting with your punch, just makes it quicker to punch. And I'm going to have a bunch of extras here, I think, but that is totally okay. So we will stamp our greetings here. I do find I get a little bit clearer image with my photopolymer stamps as well. I think they are more, what's the word I'm looking for? A little bit more foolproof. Uh, if you're new at stamping or if you have unstable hands, it's just a little bit easier to get a clear image with them. If you press too hard or if you rock your stamp a little bit to the side. So now I'll just go through and stamp one at a time, sending love and peace this season. Now I cannot see directly down on top of these because of my camera. So I may not get them perfect and that's okay. Handmade cards are not supposed to be perfect, my friends. Uh, when things don't come out 100% precise, I hope that you just roll with it and keep going because usually what I find is once I get everything put together, you don't, I, I, I don't notice that one little thing that I smudged or that one little thing that didn't go the way it was supposed to. So what do you think? Is this a little bit faster than having to line up the punch if I had stamped them first? This can go either way. There is no right or wrong in stamping. It is whatever your preference is. But I think this does save a little bit of time. Now, if I had a rubber stamp that I couldn't see through, I, like I said, I would definitely stamp those first and punch second. Okay, my greetings are ready. Now, I believe I am ready to start assembling. I, we, we are going to put several of these together. I am going to keep a few off to the back that I'm gonna save for the end to show you ways to step them up simply. But we are going to start putting most of them together right now. So what I'm going to do is, how about we start with the green ones. I am going to make piles. You may not be able to see all of these, but I am going to have my piles, I have my punches, here are my vellum punches. Here are my deer punches. I have everything here handy, just off screen. And I am going to lay out, we'll start, we'll do color by color. So like I said, I'm gonna keep one of each color off to the side to save for the end, to show you how to step some of these up simply if you would like to. And Here's what we'll do. Okay, so here were some of the pieces we had cut and I'll just show you how I had planned to lay these out. There are tons and tons of ways that you can lay these out if you want to. You can do them differently. But I am going to stick with two of this design and then two of my second design. So for this other one, I am going to put one of the big pieces and one of the small pieces off to the side with that other card base. This one we will attach right here. So when I'm attaching pieces, I could go ahead, I, what I would actually do if I wasn't recording right now is to lay all of these out and then go back and start attaching all of them at the same time. I want you to be able to see what's going on here. So I will just do three at a time. But I like to flip all of my pieces over and put the adhesive on at the same time. So let's, let's do that. Let's do it the way I would do it if I was off camera. So just flip all of these over. And here's the benefit is when I'm rolling my adhesive on, it just goes really fast. When I roll adhesive and then I flip paper over and I roll adhesive and I flip paper over, I find that that takes a fair amount of extra time. But when I do it this way, it really helps things to go a little bit 
more quickly and more smoothly. And again, there are lots and lots of ways I could lay this card out, but I am going to lay it out like that. So that's my green card. Let's move on to the red ones. Pull three out, set one off to the side. And for these, we are going to pull in the black designer papers. You could keep red on red, green on green, black on black, but let's switch these up a little bit. You always want to make sure, <laughs> I'll laugh at myself, always make sure your fold is on the left, your opening is on the right. And I will lay some of these out. Those two pieces, those two pieces, and then these big ones get a little one. I'll set these off to the side with that extra one. And you do want to make sure you have them lined up so that the uh, you have the right sides up. Like, I don't want to leave both of these sides up and then flip them over, put adhesive on the backs of both of them. Want to make sure I have the right sides up so that when I flip them over, I can put the adhesive onto what is supposed to be the backside. So we'll do that now. We'll flip these over. Now, for my last batch, I used seal adhesive. I really like my seal adhesive. It works really well. Um, I found that when I get to the end, I just slide to the side to break that little string of adhesive off. And this works really well, goes really fast. But sometimes I actually like to use glue. So I have my multipurpose glue here, and you'll be able to see me put glue on these as well, which for some people, this is nice because you get a little wiggle room in adjusting your pieces. Some people just struggle with the tape rollers. So we'll show you this, and this is another idea for you that can really save time. Now, you do have to be careful not to stick your arms in these. So what I would do off camera, I would have all of these pieces up at the top and all of my card bases down at the bottom. That way I'm not reaching over my gluey pieces to put them on. Now this one, I think I liked the, this one up at the top. And this is where a little bit of wiggle room is good because I did not get that on even remotely straight. You know how I feel, right? You've been there. And I still don't have these straight. We'll try and get that lined up. I'll leave a little gap in between those two. And then we'll do the same thing with this one. And we will have our red card bases ready. Now we'll bring in these black bases and the red designer papers. And show you what my plan is to do with these. I'll put one of these big pieces and one strip off to the side. I wanna flip this big strip over here. What do you think about the designs on both sides of these papers? I, I think it's nice that they coordinate. We've got the, the reds on the reds. Some, a lot of designer papers don't work out that way, but this one does. And I thought it made it really easy to make this style of card. Now I am going to pull my seal back in just because right at this particular moment, I am more in a seal mood than I am in a glue mood. Sometimes I'm in a glue mood. So as soon as we get these pieces on, then the fun part happens when we start to put the punches on and see everything come together. So from here forward, everything comes together really quickly. Now this one gets a little bit more detailed. I have the three pieces. In planning your cuts, of course, I showed you the dimensions I'm using for these cards, but you could use any dimensions to plan out and cut your designer papers. Sometimes 
I, I, I think sometimes people get hung up on, well, how wide does it need to be? And what's the exact size that you cut? And sometimes for cards, I don't have a clue what I'm doing. I just start cutting paper. And then once I have some different size pieces, I just start fitting them together to pl play around with where they're laying and how I like the way they look. So there is no, again, no perfection, no perfect way to do this, no right way, no wrong way. But I am showing you one way you can do it if you would like to do it this way. Okay, so we have these prepared. Before we get to the punches, let's go ahead and put these last three together and that way they'll be ready when we are ready to step up these. Uh, I'm not gonna change anything on the background, so I will go ahead and put these pieces on exactly as I did on the others. It really, really helps to lay out all the pieces at once or quite a few of the pieces at once and to put all that adhesive on. If you haven't ever made cards that way, I really encourage you to try it because you, you need a big area. So if you don't have space in your regular craft space, maybe you can go to your kitchen table or somewhere like that and really spread out because space makes a big difference. So that one I just put on on this green card, it, I, I know for a fact that one piece is crooked, but we do not have to be perfect. I know, once I get those other pieces on top, I don't think anyone will ever notice that. So we're going to leave it. We're going to embrace the imperfect. And set these off to the side so they don't get mixed in. Let's go ahead and do these others. So I would do all of them at the same time. You won't be able to see them, however. So I will spread them out a little bit. But let's do these together. And I will I'll lay out the vellum pieces first. So how this is going to come together is the vellum piece is going to be a little backdrop for the deer. Now we could have placed the deer right on top of these, they would have looked nice, but to step it up and make a really nice looking card, I decided to put this piece in the background. I love vellum because it just blends in with everything. It doesn't stand out. It doesn't block out that pretty paper in the background. It's just a nice, pretty addition that just blends in really well. Now, when I attach my vellum, I either have to use a type of adhesive that isn't going to show through, or I have to put my adhesive behind something else that will go on here. So I am going to attempt to put my, I, I am going to use seal just because it's quick. Uh, sometimes glue can cause paper to cause vellum to warp. I don't wanna mess with that today. I'm going to use my seal and I'm gonna put one little strip in the center where it will hopefully be hidden by the deer. And sometimes it doesn't show anyway, it depends on what paper I'm using. So we will put these on. And then we will add this cute deer. Now when we add the cu cute deer, <laughs> and now I feel like I have to keep saying cute deer, cute deer, not just deer. When we add the cute deer to the cards, I am going to pop those up with some dimensionals. Every fun card needs a pop-up. Not really, I just said that, I just made that up. But I do love to use pop-ups for certain things that stand out on my cards. So here's a quick tip with deer. We'll just scoot some of those over for a second, lay out some of our deer. So I will lay out, I will attempt to lay out 12 here and get them all ready. If I can count, I see two, four, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. So hopefully we got here. We'll mix in another one of the different ones, the deer that say, oh, what fun on them. 
And what I wanted to show you is here is a way to apply dimensionals that I have found works really well is to use this as the other end of my take your pick tool and I can stab and lift. And then if I remember, if I'm ready for the backing to be off, I can actually lift that backing off at the same time. Now, let me show you that again a little bit more the way I would actually do it. So I can stab it, lift it, put it on. And when I lift up here, that paper backing actually came with it. This does take a little bit of practice, but once you get the hang of it, it is a lifesaver, especially if you have arthritis or just feel like your fingers don't work real well. So we will get these dimensionals put on and then we will be close to being able to finish up these cards. So I'm not sure what I was going to say. What was I going to say? Can anyone tell me what I was going to say? <laughs> Sometimes it is hard to talk and work at the same time. Oh, I know what I was going to say. I've said this several times, but uh, if, if I had unlimited space here, no camera in my way, I, I would have done all my card bases first, all my designer paper second, uh, probably all these vellums, and then laid all these out. I will go ahead and get all these dimensionals on and then I'll just push them off to the side and they'll be ready. I will just have to be careful. And I, I probably will forget this, I usually do. I will just have to be careful not to drop anything on top of them when they have their... Uh... <laughs> that was ironic, right? Not to drop anything on top when they have their paper backing off and the sticky is exposed. Now I, you're not seeing this, but off screen, what I'm doing is when I go off screen, I'm just like pushing this with these two fingers and knocking those off in the background. So I thought I would show you that if you're wondering where my paper backing pieces are going when it's off screen, that's what I'm doing. So they're just in a pile over here on my table. And I attempted to count 12 of these deer. I have no idea if I actually counted right but we'll have this many ready and we will pop them on there. So I would love to know about your Christmas card making. Do you make Christmas cards? Uh, like I said, you can use these tips for lots of things, not just Christmas cards, but do you make a lot of Christmas cards? Do you make the same? Do you make a lot of different ones? When do you start? I know I, I hear that some people like to make a few every month. Some people like to get them done in the summertime. I hear, of, of course, some who are scrambling at the beginning of December to get them put together. There are all kinds of kinds when it comes to the card making and I'm Sometimes I'm good, sometimes I'm not. I'm not. I, the last few years I've actually sent several hundred, which I don't know if that sounds crazy or not, but that's the way it's been. And usually I have quite a few made up, but then I'm scrambling at the last minute to finish the rest. So we, we do some things kind of like what I'm showing today is how to bulk prepare some of these things in an hour or a couple of hours or an afternoon. Get these vellum pieces on. We are almost done with, oops, I have to flip it over right before the adhesive will stick. Yep, true story. We're almost done with these. Then we'll do a little bit of stepping up with these extra ones I've set off to the side. So you'll see, I will put these greetings on. There will be a couple of different ways I'll put the greetings on. And I keep debating how to put my deer on because how I put my greeting on will uh, affect, how I put the deer on will affect how I am able to put the greeting on. You'll see that here in a second. Okay, 
Okay, let's put some greetings on. Let's finish up these ones we have been working on. And then it's going to be time to do a little bit of stepping up. And at the very end, like I told you, I have one quick tip you can use that will actually save you even a little bit more time if you are interested. We'll put the dimensionals on these the same way. I would love to know, are, are you dimensional minimalist? Are you dimensional overuser? I often, and here I'm forgetting to pull my paper backing pieces off. I often am a minimal, minimalist. It just depends. Of course, I want my pieces to stay in place. But on pieces like this, uh, I'm going to have the deer, I, the deer may be behind part of this. So I, if I put two on, I'm afraid that the one will end up on top of the deer, which is already popped up, and then it won't lay level. Does that make any sense? Uh, I don't want one side of my oval to be flat on the card and then the other side popped up on top of the deer and then they won't be level and it'll just be this whole thing. So anyway, I'm just sticking one on and one will probably be good. So we'll have our greetings ready and we are almost ready to finish. I keep sticking my hand in these. Anybody feel... Anybody feel my pain? Okay, we'll scoot these carefully. Bring these cards back in. Let's finish off these ones we have started. So I was looking at different ways to put these greetings on as I was planning these cards out and we're just gonna do some different ways. Uh, this is one way that I really like was layering layering it over the front part of the deer. So you'll probably see me do that several times, but this is these are just gonna go wherever I think they look right at the moment. I'm not going to spend too much time dwelling on it. Here are my reds. Put this one down here. I debated whether it was funny to put a greeting with these deer that have the Oh What Fun written on them, but it doesn't stand out too much, and I I thought it still looked nice, so put those on, get our green ones, and add these. I just really like this oval greeting. This is one I have used that, that punch, that double oval punch, time and time again, over and over and over again. If you're interested in any of these products I'm showing, I will include links in the video description below. So you can take a look at those if you like. Okay, now let's look at these three that we're going to step up a little bit. Let's put our vellum pieces on and then we will get to a couple ideas for stepping them up. So as I was finding my dimensional backing pieces laying all sorts of everywhere here a second ago, uh, what is the funniest place you have ever found one of these little paper backing pieces? I'm trying to think. I went somewhere once. I got to another house and found one on like a casserole dish that I had taken. Um, that's 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 one of my best stories. We find them in all kinds of crazy places, but. That is one. Okay, now before I put my deer on, we are going to do a couple of things. We are going to bring in none other than some glimmer paper. Glimmer paper is an awesome way to step up projects. You can use like a little tiny strip of it somewhere, like this strip instead of the designer paper could be a piece of glimmer paper. We are going to do a little bit of punching with this glimmer paper. So two of our cards, we are going to step up that way with some glimmer punches. And then we're going to use a little bit of ribbon as well. So one of these, I am going to put the deer punch just offset a little bit behind the, the the glimmer punch behind the stamped punch. Now, now that that's on there, 
Let's add some adhesive to the back. We'll go ahead and put this onto one of these cards. So we will put this one. Oh, I think that looks lovely. Let's put that there. This one, we will do the same thing with a greeting. So we can put a regular deer on this one. And then I will attach this to the card and pop up the greeting. For this one, I definitely want to use at least two dimensionals. Anytime you're putting something over glimmer paper, you have to use some serious adhesive. That's uh, a little bit harder to get things to stick to that glimmer paper. So a lot of times I like to glue things, but since I want this to pop up, I am going to use three dimensionals. Now I'm going to be a dimensional over user. And for this one, we are going to use just a little bit of ribbon. Now, one of my favorite ribbon techniques is what you are going to see here in just a second. I'm gonna put a little bit of adhesive there. I am going to start with a tail sticking out over here on the right. We're gonna wrap this so that it comes over on the left, wrap it back on the right. And then we'll have a tail hanging off over here on this side. Now, before I cut the end of my ribbon, I always like to check and see if I have the right amount of ribbon showing. Sometimes I don't have enough to show. Sometimes I have way too much and it just looks funny. So I wanted to make sure I have the right amount. I do like the way that looks. We'll cut this tail off. Add our, I would love that with that dark colored deer. I think that looks lovely send or send I'm losing my marbles here people i've been stamping too long now i have some weird accent i have no idea where that came from okay so we have stepped up this one with the glimmer deer we stepped up this one with the glimmer backing for the oval punch that's one of the reasons i absolutely love this punch is because you can layer it like that with that same punch and then this one with a little bit of ribbon now I am going to finish these off in just a few minutes with none other than some little pearls. I love to add some embellishments to my projects and sometimes just one or two or three pearls can, or, or rhinestones or any other kind of little gem can make such a difference. So I will finish those, these off. Thanks so much for being with me me today. I hope you heard one thing or two things or lots of things in this video that can help you in your stamping. If you are new here, please make sure you subscribe and hit the little bell down below so that when I share new videos, you get notifications and you can come back and join me again soon. Thanks so much. I hope you have a blessed day and I hope you'll be back again next time when I'll be here helping you to hand make with love.